All right, 1.5 factoring quadratics. Um, I was going to have two lessons on this, but I didn't, so there was factoring quadratics one and two, but now there's just factoring quadratics. Objective, students will be able to factor quadratics in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so before we do this, I am going to teach you what I call the star method, um, but I need you guys to know what is really happening when you factor. So I'm going to teach you how to factor by grouping, and in fact, there's going to be a type of problem that we'll see later on that you really can only do by grouping. So let's just um, forget about any method that you've learned, whether it's a box method or star method or what, um, but I just want to show you what's happening when you factor. So let's first just write this. we got x squared plus 3x minus 10. When you're factoring, what you're really doing is you're kind of pulling this thing apart. So I'm going to pull x squared and the negative 10 over here. And what's left in the middle is the 3x. And we're going to break that into two parts. But to figure out what two parts we're going to break it into, um, we need something that's going to add up to 3x. Or mostly just the 3 is what we're concerned about. So we need two numbers that add up to 3. But we also want those numbers to multiply up to negative 10. So this is where the thinking comes in. I need something that adds up to this number and multiplies up to negative 10. After you thought about it for a little bit, I like to just think of things that multiply up to 10. You got 1 and 10, you got 2 and 5. Ah, 2 and 5 are 3 away from each other. Maybe we can get to 3 there. Um, and especially since I want a negative 10, I'm thinking maybe a 5x and a negative 2x. 5 plus negative 2 makes 3, so that's going to work. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And we'll see why that's important in a second. Now, what we do is, is we group these. So I'm just going to look at this section first. I'm going to take out the greatest common factor, which is just x. When I take out an x, I get x plus 5. Over here, I'm going to take out the greatest common factor, which is negative 2. When I take out a negative 2, I get x plus 5. What we're looking for is two binomials that match, an x plus 5 and x plus 5 match. Therefore, we can do reverse distribution uh, property, and we can say since these two things are being multiplied by the same thing, we can kind of put these as one term, call it x plus 5, and we can move these guys into one binomial, call it x minus 2, and now we have factored it. Now, that's a lot of work, but that's technically what's happening when you factor something. So there's some shortcuts that people who like math have developed um, all throughout the all throughout the history of this, and I'm going to teach you one that is kind of my favorite. It's called the star method. So we're going to do the same problem using the star method. So let's copy it down. It's x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now for this one, I'm going to put this diagram up here so we can see it. You're going to put the c term on top. This is the, When I talk about c term, I'm talking about the coefficient. So this is like the a term, which is just 1 b is 3, and c is negative 10. So we're going to put negative 10 up here. And we put the b term on the bottom. Again, the b term is 3. So the middle term on the bottom, the last term on the top. And we're looking for two numbers, again, that multiply up to the c term. So multiply up to negative 10 and add up to 3. Well, we've already done this. It's 5 and negative 2. Let's just check real quick. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 plus negative 2 is 3. Okay. Once we have these numbers, all we have to do is do x plus those numbers, and we have our factors. So x plus 5, x minus 2. And there's our factors. And sure enough, those are the same ones we had, right? x plus 5 and x minus 2, x plus 5 and x minus 2. So this is just kind of a real convenient way to get to the factors quickly. You don't have to do all this work. Um, but... I just wanted to show you the math behind what's going on so you understand what factoring is. It's not some magic thing that we're doing. It's really we're just breaking down the expression um, and factoring it. Uh, but this is just a lot quicker, right? So um, using star method or grouping or any other method that you want to use, go ahead and factor x squared minus 5x minus 14. Remember, you're looking for something that multiplies up to negative 14 and adds up to negative 5. Go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Alright, so as you can see, I put my C term up here, and I put my B term down here, 
I'm looking for something that multiplies with a negative 14, adds with a negative 5. I came up with 2 and 7, and particularly 2 and negative 7. So 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, and 2 plus negative 7 is negative 5. So that must be my factor there. Here's another one you could try. Go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. So these are always the ones that stump people. Uh, but again, I just put my C term up here and this one down here. And don't forget about the, the basic factor of just 1 and whatever the number is. So 1 times 8 is going to be 8. But we need it to add up to something negative. So I made them both negative because negative 1 plus negative 8 is still, or so negative 1 times negative 8 is still positive 8. But negative 1 plus negative 8 is negative 9. And then we just write those in our factors and we're done. So we can see it's a, it's a pretty simple process. Now, so far, all these ones that we've done are actually pretty easy because they don't have an A value other than just a, a little one there. But what happens if we start getting an A value like this, where it's something other than one? Well, we can just kind of extend the, um, the star method a little bit by just adding another line right here. It's a few more steps, but nothing that big a deal. So let's take a look. Um, I have some uh, steps here to just kind of follow in case it helps you. But basically, now, instead of just putting the C value up there, we're going to do A times the C value. So in this situation, it's going to be negative 2 times 30. Negative 2 times 30 is negative 60. And still just put the B value on the bottom. And now we're going to do the same thing. We need something that that multiplies up to negative 60 and adds up to negative 7. So let's think about some things that multiply up to negative 60. Um, maybe, let's see, we could do 6 times 10, but that's not going to work because that's only going to get up to 16 or a difference of 4. We could do uh, 15 times 4, but that's not going to work. We could do 12 times 5. Ooh, 12 times 5 definitely multiplies up to 60, and they're 7 away from each other. So let's just write this down, 12 and 5. However, I need a negative 60, so one of these has to be negative. And I also need a negative 7, so the bigger one needs to be negative. So I'm just going to make that negative 12. Let's check that real quick. Negative 12 times 5 is definitely negative 60, and negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. Now here's where the extra step comes in. Remember how we multiplied by that a term up here, right? Negative 2 times 30. Now we need to take our factors and divide it by that a term. That a term was negative 2, so we're just going to divide both of these things by negative 2. On the left side, we see that negative 12 divided by negative 2. That reduces nicely. That just turns into a 6. So that's one of our factors then. It's just x plus 6. However, this one doesn't reduce nicely. So we actually have a thing for that. It's called I call it bottoms up, meaning you just take the bottom term, the bottom number, and you move it up in front of the x. So it should look like this. Negative 2x. The top number is positive, so I just do plus 5. And there I have my factors. If you were to use the box method and multiply these things back out, you would end up with that exactly. So, very good. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, I have a couple ones here for you to practice the star method with. Um, why don't you go ahead and pause the video, and then when you come back, I'll have both of them up here. So I would try both of them real quick, and then, then you can check your answers in a second. Okay, so again, uh, I did 5 times 6, put it on top, the B term on the bottom, looked for two things that multiply up to 30. Um, and I got 10 and 3 multiplied up to 30, but we wanted to add up to negative 13, so I did negative 10 and negative 3. Still makes positive 30 and negative 13. Over here, it reduces to negative 2, so there's my factor x minus 2. Over here, it doesn't, so bottoms up, take the 5, move it up by the x, and then minus 3. Same idea over here, 4 times 3 is 12. 7 is the b term, so I put it right there. Um, I needed two things to multiply up to 12 and add up to 7. 3 and 4 add up to 7 and multiply up to 12. 3 over 4 does not reduce, so I went bottoms up. 4 goes with my x, 3 goes right here. Just got to remember the number on the bottom is what goes with the x. And then um, 4 over 4 does reduce, so that just becomes a 1, so x plus 1 is my factor. There we go. See you guys in the next video.